There are literally two places on Earth where kelp grows, the eastern and the western hemispheres. It usually shows up like this in your house, but it really belongs here, like this. Let's make this in Blender now. This whole project is available on my Patreon account too, if you want. The link is in the description. Start by making a plane and stretching it out like this. There are 11 ways to do this. I use the Scale tool. Go into Edit Mode by hitting Tab, hit Ctrl R to go to Loop Cut and Slide, and add in some divisions. Roll your mouse wheel to get more. Not too much or you can kill your computer, and that would probably end up killing more kelp. Next, we can shape out the kelp blade by scaling and moving points around until it looks like a leaf. Next, we add in the gas bladder. <laughs> I said add. Just throw down a sphere, make it low resolution, like 16 and 8, then rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis, scale it down, and move it onto the blade. Now we need to shape out the gas bladder. To do this, make sure you hit the toggle x-ray button at the top. N no, this, this is not going to let you see through everything, but it will allow you to select through an object so you don't just get half of it. Select the polys at the front, hit extrude, and pull it out to the center line. Hit Ctrl R to go into Loop Cut and Slide, and add in two cuts. Then, move one toward the bladder and one toward the center line. Scale things and move things until it looks like that part of the kelp. Now, get out of Edit Mode by hitting Tab, select both pieces, go to Object, and choose Join, or just hit Ctrl J. That makes them one piece, and a nice one at that. Then, go back to Object, Set Origin, Origin to 3D Cursor. Provided that your 3D cursor is at 0, 0, 0, it will place the pivot point at the center, where we want it for this object. When you rotate or move the object now, it will make sense why we just did this. Now I'll turn off X-ray mode, then select the object, right-click, and hit Smooth. That makes it look butter. Now, let's create the stem part. Create a cylinder with vertices for radius point 0, 0, 005 and depth to 100. Then, change the Z location to 50 and sit it on the floor. Then go to Object, Set Origin, Origin to 3D Cursor. Now it will pivot from the place we want it to later. Now we'll make a whole bunch of these blades. Select it, then go to Modifiers, Add Modifiers, Array. Find the one that moves it up. If we had applied transforms, this would be better, but we didn't, so let's play hide and seek. Once you find a good distance up, increase the count and get it near the top of the stem. This part is up to you on how many leaves you want, but keep it simple. Once you're happy, apply the array. We don't need it anymore. So toss it like the stuff that appears in your kitchen. Use the arrow on the array and choose Apply. Then hit Subscribe to my channel so I can keep doing these for you. We can see that every blade is the same. It just really sucks. Let's go to Sculpt Mode and change that. I'll grab the brush and just go crazy. You can go crazy too, and you don't even have to be on Facebook for five minutes to feel the cult-driven insanity here. You can also use cloth to get deformation too, but that is more insanity that I'm going to do here, so let's keep it simple. Once you have enough randomness, select the stem, hit tab for edit mode, and add in a bunch of loop cuts using Control R and rolling your mouse wheel. Or just do it manually if you have no mouse. Seriously, dude, just, just get a mouse wheel. With those cuts in place, let's select the blades and the stem and join them together like I showed you before, Control J. Now let's set this up for some animation. Add a wave modifier to this and hit play. When it sucks for you, use settings similar to this. It's probably better now, I hope. Let's add in a simple deform modifier so that we can twist and bend these things. Select the correct axis that you want. In my case, for twist, Z works well. Now we can add in the bend capability by duplicating the modifier and changing the choice to bend. X works well for me here, play around. If you want, you can add a subdivision modifier here at the top too, but just be careful. This can really increase the memory load, and Blender hates that, and so do kelp forests. Now, to make a more interesting kelp stock, duplicate this a few times and rotate and move the Z location a bit. The more you duplicate, the better it will look, but the slower your computer will get. I've played with images, and they work well, but it takes work, and I can't find free images to use here, so it's brute force for us. Now, move the camera into place and find a decent angle. Duplicate the trees and add randomness. Use the twist and bend from before to make it more interesting. You can add in a floor, too, if you want, and sculpt in some variety. Or add a deformer to it procedurally. None of the rest of this is procedural, though, so, you know, have at it. Now the shader. A simple way to get translucency on flat geometry like our leaves is to use a mix shader with a translucent BSDF shader. You could do it all with a principled shader, but this works for me. Here's the setup for the shader. It's super simple at this point. To add one shader to everything, select all the kelp trees you made. I ended up naming mine Kelp on the outliner. Then hold Shift and select the one with the shader. Then go to Object, Make Links, Materials. There, now they all look amazing. We can further refine the randomness, then go back to the shader and add in a bump for the ground. This will break it up a bit. 
Images work best here, so I'll link to a good site in the description to get PBR materials. For this video, I'll leave it here as kelp is our real hero. For this, I just plug in a noise texture into the height parameter of a bump node into the principled shader. And play with the settings a bit until I'm happy. And there, some variation. Don't go crazy here, a little bit goes a long way. I'll go ahead and add in some lights too. You may be tempted to use one light for the sun like in nature. This is boring. I use a few spotlights and vary their intensity and color. It makes things more interesting. We are not looking at the surface of water, so it works here. Just match the angles so they appear to come from a single source and make the lights really bright, like 150,000 or so. Next, we need environment. Underwater needs fog and blur. There's no way around it, and it will add to render times. You can do it in 3D or in comp, but you're gonna need to add it. For this video, I'll use a cube and scale it up to cover the whole forest. Give it a shader. Destroy the principled shader and add in a principled volume. Then hit Ctrl T if you have Node Wrangler turned on, and change the image texture node it gives you to Musgrave. Add in a color ramp afterward, plug the color ramp into density on the principled volume shader, change the texture coordinate to object, then flip the color ramp so white is on the left. More white means more density, so take it down to gray and you can see through it. I also changed the color of the volume to blue. You can now play with these values and see fog, or in this case water density and light fall off. Let's help Eevee look a bit better. Even though we will end up in cycles here, we'll use Eevee to get a rough idea of what everything will look like. So turn on Ambient Occlusion, Screen Space Reflections, turn off half res Trace, and make Volumetric Tile Size 2 pixels, and then turn on Volumetric Shadows. Look through the camera and it's looking a bit better. Switch to Cycles and wow, <laughs> it takes forever. Turn on Denoising and it's a bit faster and better. Now the blur. We can go to camera settings, choose one of the closest kelp stalks as the focus object, or you can add in an empty, it's up to you, then adjust the f-stop until it looks decent. 0 0.6 looks okay for now. The rest here is playing around to add variation. I adjust the lighting to make things look more interesting. As sunlight goes through kelp leaves, water, and probably plastic at this point, it changes color. So make pools of light to make things more interesting. You can also soften the penumbra by increasing the blend value on the spotlights. It will give a more natural fall off. We can also go back and add more variation to the blade colors too. If you add in a color ramp and a bunch of similar colors, set the interpolation to constant next to the RGB dropdown and plug an object info node set to random into the factor on the color ramp, you'll get random colors and it will look more interesting. You could also just use an image texture on the blades and it will be more realistic, but you'll need to find some. I added a texture from the site below onto the ground here but there will be so much blur in volume that you can be pretty liberal here. If it's a still, you'll want to model more vegetation for the ground and fill it all out. That part is up to you. Switch to cycles and it looks pretty good. Push it. Push it real good. The scene here is the same thing I just showed you, but I sculpted the leaves a bit more and changed to a top-down view. I did some light compositing work too in the file. It's on my Patreon if you want it. The link is in the description. That's really all there is to it. It can kill your machine if you're not careful. So make low resolution geometry that's further away from the camera, and get rid of the wave modifiers if you won't see them moving. You can also optimize the samples down and do some comp tricks that are beyond the scope here, but this will get you going. Have fun, create good stuff, and subscribe so I know to keep doing these things. Later on.